welcome to River Cross Church. We are so glad that you guys are with us this morning, and whether you're online or in person, thank you for being here. We are going to start with Red Sea Road, which uh, is one of my favorites. Please stay seated, but feel free to sing along. We bury dreams, leave them deep into the earth behind the set. Our goodbyes at the grave, but everything reminds us God knows we ain't when he asks us to go on. Amen. It is uh, good to know we will never walk alone, right? And uh, what a what a great uh, joy it is to to be able to know that and to to embrace that. Well, welcome to River Cross Church, and we're glad uh, you're here and a part of uh, our time and our gathering this morning. Uh, if you did not see this in uh, I'm going to let you know about the announcement that was made in the River Cross News is next. Sunday, we're going to do a picnic um, uh, right after the 11 o'clock service. So if you come at this service, it's great. Go and get whatever you want and bring it back. <laughs> I don't know, however you, however you want to do it. Or just come to the 11 o'clock service. That'll be fine. Um, but uh, hopefully it'll be a really good weather and a lot of fun. And uh, we'll uh, just meet right out there. And uh, still working on exactly what that entree is going to be. But if... Uh, if you can bring a side, a dessert or salad or something like that, and it would uh, be great, and uh, it'll be a lot of fun to 
uh, finally be able to start having these picnics and these gatherings again. We, we, uh, we miss doing that, and so uh, we're excited to be uh, looking forward to that next Sunday, so keep that in mind. All right, I'm going to open us in a word of prayer, if you would bow with me. Heavenly Father, we are so, so grateful and thankful for this time that we can come together and, and just be in your presence, um, that we can uh, sing these incredible songs of praise and worship. And, and, and Father, I pray that as we open your word, as we sing, as we, uh, all that we do today, all that we do in this time, uh, we'll be able to push aside anything that would hinder us from seeing you. Uh, so we're here to worship you. And Jesus, we're so thankful that you came and died for us. And we exalt you today. And we pray this all in your precious name. Amen. Please stand.
change you are near in every sorrow you are my strength you are near a peace in the storm your voice I
just sing these songs because they're really great sounding. There's good lyrics that really wise people write. Lord, we sing these songs because they are, they are promises that you speak over us. That you challenge us to speak over ourselves and to speak over not just our, our physical children, but Lord, our spiritual children and, and the people in our community and the people around us. And Lord, these are ways that we can bless each other. And they are ways that we see that you've given us. And so, Lord, right now, I just want to address any place that we don't believe that you are actually for us. Lord, would you come in your mercy and in your kindness, reveal those places to us. Lord, what are the things that we don't trust you in, that we try and control so tightly because we don't trust you? Lord, I pray that you would just come and minister your truth to us today, that you are for us. There is nothing that we have done that can separate us from the love of Jesus. There is nothing that we have done that will keep us from you, Lord. Sin will never disqualify us. It will hinder us, but it will never disqualify us from your kingdom. So, Lord, we thank you so much that you are for us. We pray that you would address these places that we don't believe you are for us and show us how we can align ourselves with the truth because we want to align ourselves with the truth of who you are, not the truth of what the world says we are. We honor you. We worship you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hi. Chachi. We're getting here ministries. You know, a lot of people come up to us and ask us hard questions about God and the Bible and spiritual living. And you know why a lot of those questions are softball questions for us? There are actually some pretty good ones. One of them being, how do I have a better prayer life? Well, good news, we got some killer tips to a better prayer life. Before we do that, though, let's start off with a title and some dance moves. No, we're not doing a title and a dance. Let's just kind of get into this. When you're saying a prayer in public, you want to use the phrase Father God as much as humanly possible. Just last week, I said a 30-second prayer and got 17 Father Gods in it. Now look, I'm not bragging. I'm just saying with a little bit of effort, it can be done. If you have a prayer request but don't actually want to request it, simply say unspoken. I currently have six unspokens that I'm praying for this guy about. Johnny, sorry to bother you, but I actually have another prayer request. Okay. What? It's unspoken. <laughs> okay, well that's seven. And while I have no clue what I'm praying about, someone does. Just no one human. The Bible says pray without ceasing, and well, we believe in the Bible. Chachi has been praying without ceasing for over 32 hours now. Chachi, how do you feel? What, who said what? Where am I? Well, Chachi, you have been praying for over 32 hours straight. You feel pretty good? Can I get a restroom break? <laughs> Not if you want to fully obey scripture. Let's say you become privy to some juicy information about someone, but don't want to be seen as a gossip. We've got good news. You're good to go if you put it in the form of a prayer request. I still cannot believe what Jill said to Keith. I can't believe it either, but did really? you know that John got canned? What? Are you, are you... Let's talk about it in a prayer group. Some think your prayer position is irrelevant, but we have found that your prayer position can not only boost your prayer life, but can stretch you physically. Chachi, why don't you go ahead and show us some examples? Well, I wasn't really planning on praying, but I guess I could give it a shot. Okay. Oh, very nice. Good, that is classic. Wow. Seriously, wow. The last thing you do when you pray is fairly obvious. You say, amen. And if you happen to be in a group of people holding hands, it's imperative that you accompany that amen with a physical action known as the hand squeeze. The squeeze lets the people on either side of you know, hey, the prayer's over, I care about you, but I'm letting go now. And when you are holding hands, never interlock, because that can make your prayer partners a little uncomfortable. We want to thank you for watching, or 
shall I say, growing in your prayer life. Yeah, now can we do the, the title and dance moves? No, just kind of say thanks for watching and... That's seriously unreal. This is actually my miracle position. Oh, me. Uh, <laughs> well, as uh, you may be aware, I um, uh, am in between series on books of the Bible. And uh, as I was praying about, uh, you know, what, where God was leading and what's next and all that, uh, uh, I, I kind of felt overwhelmed by this, um, this uh, sense of talking about praying and maybe some prayer tips to use their language. Um, uh, hopefully those interesting prayer tips, no, they didn't really help you, I know, but, uh, but, but seriously, prayer is, is one of the most incredible advantages and, and benefits that we have um, being a Christian. And, and again, while that, that video is just sort of making fun of some of the ways in which people use prayer, what I want to do today and, and in, a, in some weeks ahead of us, I want to talk about uh, some of the things that I think all of us as believers should, should be aware of when it comes to prayer. Uh, and, and if you're like me, um, all, all I was told as I started coming in, into the, my faith and, and starting to grow and stuff, uh, all, all I knew was that I was supposed to pray, right? It's like, you should have a quiet time. You should have a prayer time, a time when you're praying and listening to the Lord and, and so forth. And, and it, it's almost told you like it's a natural thing to do, that it's just sort of something that we, we learn. But again, I think what really happens is that uh, we tend to be around people and, 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 and hear them pray and hear the things that they pray about or the things that they uh, say in their prayers. And we try to, you know, adapt that to what we say. Um, when I was a kid growing up, my, my grandmother, who was a spiritual giant in, in my life, I mean, she was, she was incredible, and I'm going to talk a little bit more about her uh, in a moment, but when she um, was the, she was one of the first people that I remember praying and, and praying out loud, and um, she prayed what I called the King, Jer King James prayer, um, thy heavenly father, we, we hearken unto you and ask that thou wilt hear us and beseech us and that ye might bestow your grace upon it. I mean, she would just pray those kind of prayers. And, and while they were beautiful to listen to, I, I didn't really understand what she was saying. And, uh, and it was just sort of she had been taught, uh, you know, from a young child growing up that the, the language of the King James Bible was God's language. And that was Jesus' language. And so she kind of incorporated that into her, her prayer life. And, I, you know, I, I, she, again, was an incredible uh, spiritual giant in, in my life. And, and, and so I'm, I'm, you know, very thankful about that. But as I got older, I, I began to uh, hang around some other people, be around some other folks uh, as I started to follow Jesus and I started to hear prayers that were more in our current uh, dialogue, if you will, our dialect. And so um, I, I heard people pray things like, Lord, give us strength. Lord, give us wisdom. Lord, we ask for this or we ask for that. Or Lord, please keep us safe. Uh, in a variety of um, those kind of phrases. And of course, uh, the most common word that I think we use in prayer today, at least people I'm around and even myself, is the word just. You know, we like, Lord, just keep us safe. Lord, just, we, we like to throw just in there like it's uh, something that God needs for us to, to add to it. But, and, and again, here's the thing I want you to hear from me today is there, there is no wrong way of praying. I mean, if your heart is towards the Lord and your, your heart is to, to be in this relationship with, with, with God, and, and your prayers are from your heart and, and so forth, there's, there's no wrong way of, of doing that. But um, something I have found useful for me is as I began to dig a little deeper into uh, what I think the Scripture has to say to us, um, I found that it was helpful in, in my prayer life. Uh, and so what I want to do is start by talking about different types of prayers because we don't really put types of prayers out there, and there are actually more than the three that I'm going to mention, um, but these three are three that are particularly um, important to me and, and ones that I 
uh, think are very important for us to, to um, uh, understand and, and have some. Uh, now, um, again, like I mentioned, I was going to talk about my grandmother again. <laughs> she, she was above and beyond uh, anyone I've ever known, a prayer warrior. When you looked up that term in the dictionary, I think her picture w- would have been there. She, she had this uh, list of people that she was praying for, and um, she was regularly praying for them, not just in the morning, but throughout the day. And as she got older and she was unable to, uh, to move about a whole lot, she found herself even praying more for people. And, and so she would just pray for people all the time. And what that kind of prayer is called is intercessory prayer. In other words, you intercede on someone else's behalf. Um, and at the time in my life when I wasn't going to church regularly, I, I remember so clearly uh, this one time I, I visited my grandmother. And, and first of all, I mean, every time I visit her, she would say, I'm praying for you, honey. I'm praying for you, honey. But this one time I, I remember uh, asking her, I said, Grandma, you say that all the time, but what are you praying for me for? What, what is it you're praying about, you know, for me? And she said very, very quickly and succinctly that Jesus would get my attention and bring me back to the church. That was her, that was her prayer. And, and that, was, that was something that she said, I'm praying regularly. And um, as I heard that, I kind of shrugged it off at first, but it kept sort of staying there and staying there. And, and, and listen, she prayed that prayer for over 20 years for me, and God answered her and said, and, and I mean, here I am. Uh, it's, uh, it was a, a, a one of these things that I point to and look to at how God continued to pursue me and chase me, but largely, I, I think a big part of that was my grandmother, how, how faithfully I'm, I'm sure she prayed for me. Um, and along those lines, what I really hope is that you have people that you are praying for, and specifically people who are far from God, people that haven't come to faith or are out of the church or, or whatever it is. Um, I certainly do, and I think it's a really important way to pray. Um, the another, another way that uh, we have really, in our church over the last, I don't even know, 12 to 13 years, maybe a little longer than that, uh, have come to to really embrace and understanding is healing prayer and, and what God has shown us through Scripture about praying for people that are in physical pain, praying for people that are in uh, psychological pain or need he- psychological healing, uh, people who need uh, are, are struggling with things like infertility, all of those kinds of things. We have seen God do some amazing things in our church over, over time, not Every prayer meeting does that happen, but there are many times when, when we do uh, witness God, God at work and God doing things. Um, and, and this type of prayer is, is different than intercessory because you're having almost a dialogue with someone and praying for them as you, as you work through some spiritual matters in their life. Um, it, it is about the spiritual things. Um, this last, uh, and, and there are different ways in, in which you can even do that. So this past uh, prayer meeting we had, we we uh, learned a lot about generational healing and the way uh, generations pass on things and and stuff and that, you know those kind of things are things you just don't you know learn on your own. I mean you you've got to be in and around people that have experienced uh, some things that uh, have have helped them along the way and and so that you might see how God can can. Uh, work in our lives and break through those things that we uh, struggle with. Um, God does the work, but he calls on us to pray for one another in those moments. And and there are a lot of people, I I think, that are, um, I mean, first of all, unfortunately, uh, healing prayer is one of those things that's been abused and misused uh, for a long period of time. In fact, what you see on TV is, is very disturbing, to say the least. And so because of that, there are a lot of people who are uh, skeptical and, um, and even kind of freak out. I certainly was for many years in, in my life. But it's simply amazing to see God work through this type of prayer. It's not about us. It's about him, and, and it's a beautiful thing. So um, the one thing I'll just throw a little plug in there is uh, if you've not been to a prayer meeting, I hope you'll come. Again, I'm not going to try to set up any expectations, but I think you will learn some things. I think you'll learn some things that you haven't haven't learned before, and who knows what God might do in our midst, because he certainly has done that in the past. So um, 
again, uh, there are other types of prayers beside those, but uh, the one that, the last one that I want to talk about and the one that I'm going to spend the rest of our time talking about is what I just call simply personal prayer. You know, how you pray on a regular basis, what, what that looks like and what, what we might, you know, learn from Scripture about that. And, and I'll even throw this in there. If you uh, say, well, I really don't pray on a regular basis, then my hope is to encourage you to start doing that, that it's, it's something very, very, very important. Now, uh, again, I'm just going to give you a quick little glimpse. I think it's important to have a time that you set aside, that you put value your time with God, and so you set that aside. Not that many things can interrupt that. Um, there might be emergencies here and there. Um, but, you know, how long that is is dependent on, on, you know, the individual. But I also will tell you that I think it's important not just to have the one time, but throughout the day as you see God in your life, see God do something, I, I just pull away from the moment and have a little prayer uh, and speak to God about it. And, and it could be in a lot of different ways. But I want to talk specifically uh, more than anything about the time that we set aside uh, for our prayer time with the Lord that we we do that. And, and listen, in the end, the primary reason uh, for personal prayer is to communicate with God, to, to, to communicate in your relationship with God. Uh, simply put, you cannot have a healthy, growing relationship with God if you do not spend time with Him. Um, I mean, think about this. Any relationship, any relationship, uh, it, it is it is important to spend time with the person that you're in that relationship with, right? You're not going to have uh, much of a relationship. I mean, in fact, you know, if you don't spend time with them, it's going to be a pretty unhealthy relationship. So it's important that we take that and understand that that same thing is true with God, that we need to have time with him. We need to spend time with him. And, and if you truly believe that the most important relationship, and as a believer, it should be the most important relationship is with God, then you're going to want to spend time. You're going to want to make that time with him a priority in your life. So like I said, um, uh, prayer is really a conversation with God. Um, and, and I don't want to get too, um, too far off on trying to say how structured it should be or, or whatever. It is your relationship. And, and each of us communicate in, in different ways. But the interesting thing is, um, if you're like most people, your prayers um, right now or most a lot of the times don't really sound uh, like conversation, right? They, they're maybe not like my grandmother's prayers, but they're, they're, they're definitely uh, sort of like you kick in a different mode. Now, like I mentioned earlier, um, they probably sound like some phrases that you heard from other people uh, as they have prayed, and so you just kind of incorporate that in. Uh, and the prayer phrase that I want to talk about today is the, is the phrase, Lord be with me, or Lord be with us. Uh, I'm going to guess that many of you have prayed that at some point, maybe even on a regular basis, uh, and we'll say it like this, Lord, be with us as we meet. Uh, Lord, be with us as we travel. Lord, Lord, be with me as I talk with my kid. And, and you're probably thinking again, what's wrong with that? Isn't that in the Bible? Well, it is, and we're going to look at some of that. It's in the Bible this morning. But, but here's the deal, and, and, and this is just for those of you who may fall asleep or if you have to leave early or, or whatever. Saying a canned phrase, like, like a, a phrase like that, that doesn't reflect the heart of someone who fully grasps the reality of what Christ has done for them, that, that's, that's what happens is we, 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 we just kind of go through motions, Right? And, and what you want to avoid more than anything, I think, in prayer is just going through the motions. It, it has, needs to be a, a loving, heartfelt conversation with, with God. And again, not to make anybody feel like you're doing anything wrong. I, I, I got to keep emphasizing that because I don't want you to leave here and go, well, I guess I messed that up. No, we, you can't even mess it up, right? You can't. But I just want to give you some things to think about to, to maybe move you a little more um, in a direction that God wants you to come from in, in, a, in a relationship with him. And, and I think God just wants us to have real conversation with him. So if you have a Bible uh, or the church app, oh, wait a minute, I didn't update the church app, sorry. 
Go ahead uh, and turn in your Bible or watch it on the screen behind me. Genesis 39. And we're going to look at um, uh, just a few verses to, uh, to, to, for us to pray that, that are about God being with us. So in Genesis 39, starting in verse 20, it says, By, While Joseph was there in prison, and if you know the story about Joseph, it's a, I mean, it, it's just incredible what a, what a great guy uh, Joseph was, and yet how um, he got lied to and, 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 and pulled it. Anyway, uh, accused of things he didn't do and all that. And so he got thrown into prison. It says, but while, while Joseph was there in prison, the Lord was with him. He showed him kindness and granted him favor in the eyes of the prison warden. Now, when I read this and, 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 and similar verses like this, I, I'm, I'm immediately drawn to the thought that um, if God was with Joseph, why was he wrongfully thrown into prison? I mean, wouldn't that have been the thing he would have protected him from? It seems like if God was with him, he would have protected him from that, but, but he did not because he had other plans. But nevertheless, God was with him. Now let's look at uh, something from First Chronicles 4, and if you are familiar with the, um, the a book was written about the prayer of Jabez, this is where that comes from. It's in uh, verse 10, Jabez I cried out to the God of Israel, oh, that you would bless me and enlarge my territory. Let your hand be with me and keep me from harm that I will be free from pain. And God granted his request. Okay, so Jabez prayed just like I'm saying, right, that the Lord be with him. He, he prayed it straight up. Um, and, it, and, and it says that God granted his request. Now, all of that is true, and so we see that, and we take that, and we apply it to our life, and, and I think that's, um, there's nothing wrong, again, with that, but what I want us to do now is I want us to move into the New Testament, because both of these verses were out of the Old Testament, and I'll come back and talk about that some more in a moment, so let's move to Matthew 28, and it says this in verse 19, therefore, Jesus is giving us the Great Commission, right? He says, therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything that I've commanded you, and surely I am with you always. Isn't that great? <laughs> oh, I'm with you always. Jesus says, I'm with you always to the very end of the age. Now, the Bible talks a lot about God being with us, right? In fact, Jesus is called Emmanuel, which means God with us. So the thing I want to drill down on is how is he going to be with us? I, I mean, I think that's really what this kind of comes down to is what does that really look like? When we understand how he is going to be with us, it helps us understand our relationship with him better so we can have better conversations with him or it should be that way that it goes. So as a result, um, it may even um, change some of our prayers to be uh, more like real conversations, who knows? But turn with me to John chapter 14, or look at the screen. And, um, and, and an important truth comes to life. It's, it's subtle, but, it, but it, an important truth comes to life as Jesus tells his disciples what they can expect, because this is uh, all new to them, just like it is to many of us. And, and he says this, he says, I will ask the Father, and he will give you another helper. And, of course, that is the Holy Spirit. Why it's capitalized. That he may be with you forever. That, that is the Spirit of truth whom the world cannot see because it does not see him or know him. But you know him because he abides with you and will be in you. Will be in you. You see, in the Old Testament, the Holy Spirit wasn't dwelling in anyone. So God's presence had to be with them. And when Jesus walked the earth, then God was in the flesh, right? But he was just one person when Jesus was on the earth. And that's why he says, when I leave, <laughs> I will ask the Father and he will give you the Holy Spirit. And, and as a result of what Christ did on the cross, you and I have the opportunity for God not to just be with us, but for God to be in us and, and and instead of god being you know in one person like christ what happens is christ manifests himself through the holy spirit 
in all of us who believe in him. Listen, God's presence is radically different today than it was before the cross. He is not, again, just with us, but he is in us. And when you and I understand that, when we, when we grasp what that means, our relationship with God should be different, should grow stronger. Let's turn to Colossians uh, 1. The Apostle Paul gives us an incredible insight into this idea when he wrote this in verse 26. The mystery which has been hidden from the past ages and generations but has now been manifested to his saints. So this is about as straightforward as it gets, right? Everyone who had lived prior to that time, because Paul was in the time of Jesus, he was just, you know, a little bit after that he was uh, starting the churches and stuff. And so it says prior to that time that people just didn't know uh, about, uh, about him because he wasn't in us, right? And, and so this is an important statement that this great mystery is only going to be available to his saints. His saints, you're a saint, I'm a saint. Those of us who follow Jesus, we are saints. We may not feel like saints, we may not think we act like saints, but we're saints in Jesus' eyes and, and in the Lord's eyes. And so um, those people who believe in Jesus as their Lord and Savior, here is the mystery, verse 27. He says, to whom God willed to make known what is the riches of the glory of this mystery among the Gentiles, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. I, I, think, it's, I think it's just so incredible that we sometimes can read past it and go, yeah, Christ is in me. Yeah, I understand. I've read that and stuff. But what does that look like? What, what, is, what, do, what does that mean to us? That, that God with us in this age is not just him being beside us or above us or around us or under us. He's in us. Listen, the people back then were probably looking uh, for these miraculous signs from, from God. But listen, those things are external things. And the great mystery is that he is working in us. It, it's an inside job, not, not an outside job. The change that happens in you comes from the inside out, not the outside in. Listen, everything else that you learn, everything else that you, I mean, you go to school, you, you, you play a sport, you do whatever. What, how does that happen? How does that come about? It's an outside in thing, right? You're, somebody's teaching you, you're watching, you're doing this. The transformation that God does in your life comes from inside you out. That is huge. That's where transformation takes place. It's not you gritting your teeth and trying to be better at it. It's you realizing that it's Christ in you. Now, there's a whole, listen, it, this is so important to learn because look, this is what it should look like in verse 28. It says, so we tell others, uh, so we tell others about Christ. Maybe I didn't put that one in there. Uh, warning everyone, you'll just have to listen, I guess. Warning everyone and teaching everyone with all the wisdom God has given us. We want to present them to God perfect in their relationship to Christ. That's why, and this is Paul talking, he says, that's why I work so hard, depending on Christ's mighty power that works within me. Now, Paul is saying this great truth doesn't mean you just hang out in your hammock and, and you, you wait on the glory of God just to shine on you. He's saying you put yourself out there in the field to be used by him, not working for him, but allowing him to work within you. Now, take that in for, for just a minute, that, that it's Christ working in you that is where he wants to be. This beautiful passage from Galatians 2, I think, hits it even harder. It says this in verse 20, I have been crucified with Christ and I no longer live. Man, when you say that, and you say that with a straight face and with an understanding of it, you, you're, you're moving along in your faith. It, it, I've been crucified with Christ. When he was Christ, crucified, I'm crucified, him, and I no longer live, but Christ lives in me. The life I now live in the body, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. This incredible truth 
is, is so hard to understand. In, in the simplest way I know, it means that God's will is more important than your will. It means that his glory is more important than my glory. It means that I am satisfied in who I am more than who I am not. Listen, we are in a world where we're constantly, I wish I was this. I wish, I, I wish, you know, my church was like that. I wish my job was like this. I wish my car or my home or my, whatever. you know, we're like always looking around at, at how great it is for everybody else, right? And what Jesus says is, listen, I want you to be satisfied in who you are and let me live my life through you in that way. It, it means so much more than just us understanding we got to read our Bible and sing a few songs and all that stuff. It, it means that we are living our life. Listen, if you're a believer, um, this, is, this is one of the most difficult things to understand and to live out. But I'm telling you, if you're not a believer, you simply cannot understand what this means. Listen, there's nothing in this world that, that you can relate to that helps you understand what God living inside of you is like. There's not anything like that. The only thing I can tell you is, is if, you're, if, you're, if you're honest, if you really take a snapshot of, of what's going on inside of you and, and you're, you're looking at that, that, that you know something is missing inside of you, but you don't know what it is. And, and unfortunately... I think many try to feel satisfied by money, my position, by, by, you know, lots of different things. But you will never do anything that fills a void in your life that only God can fill. And when he's in you, he's transforming you to allow him to live through you. Listen, the Christian life is meant to be lived by Christ, not by you or me. That, that's a, that's, a, that's a tough thing. He, he, he wants to live his life through you. Um, I, I've got something I want to uh, show you to try to help you remember this. I, I brought this little bottle um, of, um, I don't know if you can see it, um, but you know it looks like it's just a simple bottle of water. But what this bottle is, and I, I now live, we bought a house where we have a, a well, in that house and so i took it off the tap this is a hundred percent florida aquifer water right there a hundred percent florida aquifer water in this little thing um now it's not the entire florida aquifer in my little bottle right here but it's all florida aquifer water in this bottle you see if 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 it was if it was all of it, it would be a much bigger container, right? But in a similar way, what I want you to see is God has chosen you to make you a container of Christ. And he says he will fill you up with all the fullness of Christ. Now, does that mean all of God is in you? No, but it does mean that what is in you is all God. Does that make sense? That, that what's in you is all God. It means that the Holy Spirit is dwelling inside of you to bring about the glory of God. Now, if, if this is the first time that you've heard anything about this, God living in you, Christ living his life through you, you're probably like I was the first time. You're like, man, I don't know. <laughs> that doesn't really, that doesn't really jive with anything that I kind of fully understand and, and stuff. I mean, I still got this going on and all this happening and everything. But, but what you have to remember is that God designed you for a purpose. And he is the one that accomplishes that purpose through you. And ultimately, that purpose is to glorify God. Now, now don't miss this. God glorifies himself through you. So it's not up to you to try to glorify God. Sometimes I'll hear somebody say, I'm, I'm trying to glorify God. I say, well, if, if you let go... <laughs> He'll glorify himself through you. That's, that's the way that works. He will do that when you learn to truly love him and trust him and not be so worried about all these other things that you think is supposed to be the way you live your life or the way you're supposed to uh, look or whatever it is. You see, here's the thing. We come into this world separated from God. 
We're, we're born with a sin nature. We're separated from him. And it is only through receiving Jesus as your Lord and Savior that you can be connected to God. And when we get connected, he births in us a new life that lasts for eternity. And that life, that eternal life starts at the moment that you believe in Jesus as your Lord and Savior. That, that's when that life begins in the here and now. And that's when you get all of God, not just part of him, not just like a little, okay, I'm just going to give it a little bit here and a little bit here and stuff. You get, you get all of him. It, it, it is us to, to let go of the selfishness in us and allow God's will, God, to take us where he wants to take us. Now, again, we've got years of bad habits. We've got years of you know, all this kind of stuff, and it doesn't mean that he's going to immediately change us the, the minute we, we come to that place. We wish it would, right? But, but over time, what happens is you begin to look more like Jesus if you have found yourself trusting in him and letting him live his life in and through you. So when, when, when you start praying and, and you think, God be with me, maybe that, that comes to mind. My, my hope is that now maybe you'll add another uh, little phrase into your repertoire um, because he's already with you because he is in you. Now, again, don't get me wrong. If you didn't know that he is in you, then the obvious thing is that you would want him to be with you, right? I mean, it feels good to, to have him with you and to be ready. But, but let, me, let me ask you something. Who is serving who when you ask him just to be with you? It's, it's like, Lord, be with me is a pretty self-focused thing, right? I, I want you to, to, to guard me, to protect me, to do all these things for me. And believe me, he loves you, and he wants to do good things for you. And so it's not about that, but it's not for you to sit there and ask him for what you really want to do. And this is the phrase that I want to encourage. Oh, we've already got it up there. I want to encourage you to think about this phrase. Is Lord, live through me. Lord, live through me. Be, be you know, so, um, you know, when, when, we, when we're thinking about, you know, Lord, be with me uh, in different ways. Uh, Lord, be with me on this interview. Be with me in this trip. Be with me in all this. Let me, let me suggest that we, we kind of turn that around. Letting your life, um, you know, letting go of your life can be one of the most difficult things that you do but it also can be one of the most fulfilling things. So instead of saying, Lord, be with me as I go to this job interview, start saying something maybe, Lord, live through me as I go to this job interview. Lord, live through me as I go on this trip. Lord, live through me as I help this family in need. Lord, live through me as I get into this relationship. Lord, live through me in whatever it is that you are faced with. And when you really turn yourself over to the living God's way of doing things, there really is no limit to what he can do in and through you. Because listen, <laughs> I, I may not be God, but what I got in here is all God, right? And what you have in you is all God. And he wants to live his life through you. Now, if you don't know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, I, you know, I don't know any other way to say it other than you're on your own. God is not in you, right? But here's the good news. He loves you, and he's, he's, he's not punishing you. He's not out to get you. What he is really doing is being patiently waiting on you. The reality is that when you put your faith in Jesus um, and, 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 and trust in him, he begins to, to fill you up. But when you don't do that, what you have is faith in yourself. It's like, I'm, I'm out here on my own. How, I'm on my own on how to handle my life. I'm on my own, how to make it work. And, and you may be in a place where um, you're comfortable with that. I, I mean, I've been there. But there will come a day when you realize that life on your own is empty and that no amount of money, friends, position, or anything else will ever satisfy what only God can satisfy. So I, I, I don't know if, if those watching or here may be at a point where you are ready to um, put your faith in Jesus, that you now see that Jesus is, is, 
is, is who he says he is and you want him to be your Lord and Savior. Um, we don't have traditional invitations in our church, but that doesn't mean that we don't want to be available and respond, help you in responding to anything that Jesus might be doing. Um, so if you are at that place, um, I'm going to tell you a very simple way of praying. Jesus, I don't know that, um, that I, I know I can't do anything. I mean, you, you admit it's sort of, I know I'm a sinner and I can't do anything to earn your love, but I ask you to forgive my sins and to come into my life and be my Lord and Savior. Just simple words that come from your heart that you have believed in him is, is when you come to that point of faith. And what you need is to be around people that can help nurture you and help guide you through that. So if you're at that place and you want to talk about what God's doing in your life, I encourage you to see me or see someone here afterwards. Uh, there'll be a, a phone uh, a text number on the screen at the end. You can text and say, hey, I'd like to talk to you about uh, uh, my faith. Whatever it is, if God's stirring in you, respond to that, though. Let's pray. Jesus, we are so thankful that you have provided a way. That you didn't just leave us here to try to figure it out but that you went to the Father and asked that we would have the Helper, the Holy Spirit. And so, Father, I pray today would be a day that you would just uh, speak to each one of us with where we are in leaning into that truth, that we would um, really come to a place of understanding how much more there is in living our life the way that you want us to live our life. And that we would come to that place where we would see that we need to let go more than we've let go in the past. And Jesus, I just pray that you would uh, continue to work that truth out in us. Because not only do we want you to just be with us, we want you to work in us and to live your life through us. And Jesus, we ask you now, in, in your incredible love and in your incredible grace, to pour out all of that on us right now. We pray this all in Jesus' name. Amen. I'm standing here with open arms. I'm learning where my help singing like the battles won because oh, I'm learning where my strength comes from not by power not by
guys so much for being here with us this morning. Just a reminder, we have our picnic next week, so we hope that you can make it. And I think there's probably a sign up to so look at the newsletter to bring something. Um, I'm going to go ahead and close us out with a benediction, and it is from, it's a newer one, Psalm 139, 13 and 14. For you created my inmost being. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I praise you because I'm fearfully and wonderfully made. Your works are wonderful. Amen. Love you guys. Hope you have a great week. We'll see you soon.